and welcome to our program Where God Weeps, a program where we talk about the situation of the suffering church around the world. Iraq has become again an international crisis, and particularly this situation is a significant threat for the Christian community in this country. To learn more about the situation of Christians in Iraq, it is my privilege to welcome to our program His Grace Archbishop Joseph Mirkis, Archbishop of the Diocese of Kirkuk and Soleimania. Your Grace, welcome to our program. Welcome to you too. Can you put us in perspective, where is your archdiocese in geographically and historically in, in the scenario of uh, Iraq? Kirkuk is a city in the northern Iraq. It's about 350 kilometers north of Baghdad. It doesn't belong to Kurdistan, but now the Peshmerga, the Kurdish army, is occupying this region and it's disputed between Kurds and the central government of Iraq. It's uh, disputed because there is a plenty of oil. The petrol, the first drop of petrol in Iraq was in Kirkuk in 1921. So this city, we can say, has changed the history of the Middle East. Because uh, when the, before the, uh, the World War, the first one, uh, Germans knew that there is plenty of oil. Because oil is almost on the ground. Uh, there is a fire, it's called eternal fire. It burns since the ancient times, maybe since 50,000 years. The gas is coming out and it burns all, all the time. So this region is commercially, economically, is very important. And you can imagine all the populations who came and lived in Iraq, in Mesopotamia, this city became Christian since the 5th fifth, fifth century, at least 5th century, because we have a church called the Red Church, because of the martyr. They was uh, killed in 340 uh, after a persecution. Uh, so we have the, the, the remembrance of... Uh, a martyrized uh, Christianity since the beginning. This is the reason for what our patriarch wears uh, red clothes in souvenir of the, of the massacre, of the slaughter, uh, occurred in 340, the Good Friday. Our patriarch was killed this day and many with him were martyrized. So in memory of, 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 of those events, yes. he, he wears the, the red vestments. Now, it is important that you're mentioning this, Your Grace, because uh, nowadays in the, in the crisis that, that uh, Iraq is facing, uh, it seems that uh, Christians are a minority among minorities. It's really a minimal uh, number of people that claim to be Christians nowadays. How did this happen? Yes. Before Islam, majority of the inhabitants of Mesopotamia were Christians. But little by little, since the 6th century till the 12th century, Christianity maintained, maintained, was maintained in, 
in Mesopotamia, especially at the time of the great empire like Abbasid. And, but uh, with the, the movements of the 13th century, when the Mongol, the Tartar, came and destroyed Baghdad, the Christianity, little by little, disappeared. And now, with the, the last invasion, 2003, uh, we were more than one million Christians in Iraq, and uh, they, we were about, all Iraq was uh, 25 million. We were about 3% uh, of the population of Iraq, but now two-thirds of this number fled away. They went to the Western countries, they disappeared. So we have now small dioceses. And now we are afraid of uh, another wave of emigration from the rest, from Iraq with the rest of Christians who, who doesn't see uh, the future with uh, hope. You put as a reference 2003, the, the, second, the second war in, in uh, Iraq. Um, in your opinion, the situation of Christians was better before, during uh, Saddam Hussein regime? Yes, uh, I'm not sure we can uh, say uh, in terms of better and uh, worse. Uh, all the, uh, the descent to hell started before with the, with the uh, dictatorial regimes uh, many years before. You know, uh, it's very difficult to explain uh, things in terms of black and white. The deterioration of the situation in Iraq started with the change of uh, social and demographic situation, economical situation. Uh, we cannot separate uh, what happened after the Second World War and uh, the rise of, uh, of nationalism after the collapse of the European and uh, especially German nationalism with Italian nationalism. And uh, we, we saw, on the other hand, a rising of uh, the Third World nationalism. And uh, this mentality uh, was used by politicians who wanted to build something against the Western countries. So they started exactly what Europe was trying to start 100 years ago. And you cannot se se uh, separate what happened in Europe with what happened. We are, we are always under the influence of the waves of the mentality of the thinkers who came from the West. West is the, the leader of philosophers, of the thinker. So now we are, we are, we, we, we changed from nationalism to religious identity. So uh, religious identity, after religious identity, the rising of Islam and uh, uh, fanatismus. Now we we fell in a sectarian fanatismus. The, now the war is between not between religions only. It is between Shia and Sunni, between uh, like in, uh, in in Ireland between uh, Protestant and Catholic, like in Africa between uh, uh, black and white in South Africa. So all, all the problem goes to the definition of your identity. Who are we? What are we? How we can deal with our differences? What happening in Iraq, uh, it's not stranger from what happening in all the, all the world, especially all the, th what we used to call the third world. Now, you mentioned uh, Sunnis and Shiites, Your Grace. Uh, you foresee the um, uh, breaking of uh, the integrity of the country as, as something inevitable? 
nowadays? Yes, yes. Because of this um, rivalry between Shiite and Sunni? Yes. What happened in 2003 with the American invasion, uh, it was uh, the opening of Pandora box. It opened all the uh, all all things who, who, who were uh, um, hidden in uh, our society, uh, and uh, I always w was afraid uh, that what happened in Yugoslavia mm -hmm. can happen in Iraq. Yugoslavia is exactly uh, half of superficie of Iraq, only 200,000 kilometers. They became 11 countries, Yugoslavia. And what we are afraid to see now, not only in Iraq, but all the Middle East, all the Muslim countries, all the Arab countries, that every uh, is the disintegration of those societies. I think it's very dangerous uh, to to try uh, to eliminate the the differences. Uh, maybe we cannot only uh, split Iraq into three entities: Kurds, Sunni, and Shia. But even between Sunni, even between Shia, there are many struggles and many differences of points of view. So, I don't know where we can stop. With this perspective, Your Grace, uh, what is the role of uh, ISIS? Uh, are they precisely trying to go back to that uh, unification that, that was missed? I can say that what happened uh, starting from the 10th of June is the consequence of this hidden uh, hate of the Western mentality, Western uh, development. It's a new Cold War. Before it was between Soviet Union and uh, West. Now it's with, between the Islamic world and, the West. and West. And it's exactly, it's, it's at the same time, uh, 89. It started with the fall of the uh, Berlin, Wall. Berlin Wall. So we can say that the lack of thinkers, the lack of education, the lack of universities, you know the level of education and, uh, and analphabetism uh, who, who is uh, now very dangerously high in all our region is the reason that you can use the popul uh, popul populism. You can politically, uh, if you are short-sighted, you can use those people. How you can accept and imagine all those people who blood themselves, who kill themselves uh, in order to change situation. Uh, this is the definition of terrorism. Terrorism doesn't use the formal weapons, but it uses the, the inside of the human person. Manipulation. Manipulation of, of the youth. Fear. So now what I see in our region is uh, the, the schools, the universities are in very bad situation, uh, the health of the person, the human person is not respected, and I am afraid that this is going more and more. You can manipulate the, the, the population with some very simple ideas. So what's happening now is exactly in the same hand. Uh, it's only dichotomia. It's black and white. West is very bad. It's the devil. And this, uh, this word was used by, by the Iranian Khomeini revolution when he called America the big devil. And 
it's always used that West is devil, West is bad, and we have to go back to our values, to our beginning. So everybody is making, uh, in French we say sur uh, uh, rising, rising the, uh, the fanatism by being very strict. Like the zealot in the time of Jesus, we have to make the exactly the pure religion, the pure Islam. Your Grace, this is a, this I think is a difficult question. When every time that I I present to to uh, our guests, you as a pastor, um, how can you ask somebody uh, to stay? You know, one of your this Christian family to say, this is your land. We've been here since the third century. We have an important contribution. You are a genuine Iraqi. How can you ask somebody to, to risk their lives to martyrdom, maybe? For me, it is a very difficult question. And uh, on my soul, on my conscience, I say, I will stay. I am there. And I have a mission. If you have a target, if you have a mission, you can find the reason for staying. But in the other hand, if you want only to have a, a peaceful life, if you want to live you and your children uh, differently, okay, you can immigrate. And I spent many, many uh, summer vacations those 20 years to visit our diaspora all over the world uh, as journalist, as uh, uh, lecturer, to, to try to make uh, the basic uh, uh, thoughts how to deal with immigration. It's easy to go out, but it's not easy to integrate the new societies. And what is happening in our world that uh, the problem becomes 10 times more difficult when you immigrate. When you stay, if you have a target, if you have an idea to help people, because in, in this country, in this country, as we read in, the, uh, in, in Jonah, in Jonah book of the Bible, uh, Jonah is a prophet, small prophet, and he is stubborn. He doesn't want to go to evangelize uh, Nineveh. Nineveh. Uh, why he doesn't want to go? Because he doesn't understand why God sent him to a very awful city like Nineveh. But God, at the end, the last, last word in Jonah is there is 12,000 people, uh, 12,000 children, without counting the animals. I think this phrase is really something very modern. All those millions of children in our country, who can think about them? Who can think about their education, their uh, health? We Christians in Iraq, we always used uh, two talents we have. We open schools and we open hospitals. If we can help those people, maybe we can do our mission as Christians. On the other hand, all the animals. Why in Jonah book also animals are I mentioned? Mm -hmm. mentioned. And this is the ecology. This is before, uh, three, three centuries before Christ, uh, God uh, loves ecology, loves the animals. Those animals uh, are also in our spirituality. The, this, this, uh, uh, this land, uh, this blessed land, uh, very rich land. We have oil, we have two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates. We have mountains, we have deserts, we have everything. Why we cannot live in peace? Because we are not in the path of the Lord, and maybe uh, we Christians, even if we are small minority, even if we are only 11 persons, we can, can, make a we can communicate this 
lesson to all the Iraqis. So I don't consider myself the bishop of Christians only. I have so good relation, good relation with everybody. So my uh, staying in Iraq is a testimony of something else, not of another religion, but another view to God, another looking to God. In the same religion, you can find those differences. Even if in Christianity, we can be fanatic, we can be uh, blind and don't see the reality of what God wants from us. So if I defend Christian, Christians in Iraq only as a society of, of belonging person to another uh, uh, bureaucratic uh, uh, level, I think it doesn't, uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't deserve to live and die for this the, idea. The risk. No. Uh, the risk for me is what Jesus wanted from us to testimony that God loves not only Christians, but everybody. And this everybody are those seniors, old people, elderly, children, uh, men, women, all those people who are suffering in silence. This, this majority of the population who are kidnapped by this uh, awful mentality, this fanatism is something, it's like a disease. We are, we are now inside a big epidemic of uh, of uh, no, uh, no hope. You know, in the West, you have psychologists who study uh, the depression of the individuals. But in our society, we have a social depression. People suffer from no hope. If we go, who will give hope to those people? Who will say some good words to them? So I think staying, yes, but not only staying. We have to say something. You have a mission. And uh, Your Grace, um, one last question. What do you want the Universal Church to know about your situation? I mean, you painted a, a, quite a complex uh, scenario in, in our conversation, but uh, specifically, what do you want the Universal Church to know of your struggles, your challenges? What do you need from us? I think you have a very big disease in the West. Individualism. Ego. The ego here, when I come to the West, I see people who don't care only with their ego. So all your problems, all your, every, every problem I find, I can guess it from the, the importance, inflation of the ego. The ego is individual, the ego is also social. Every country, small country, or, or big country. I, I think in America, in United States, I went uh, many times, I said 87% uh, of the Americans, they never left their state. They never see another thing, and when I read papers in Europe, I see that international news is only one or two percent of the, of the paper. They don't care about what's happening in the world. And uh, because when you are, uh, you ate, when you, uh, you slept You're good, satisfied. so you are satisfied. You don't, th why you think about many people who are suffering? And there is, uh, I published once an article about uh, uh, Saint John Paul II. Uh, when he was a pope, uh, there was uh, some, uh, some uh, curfew, some interdiction of, uh, uh, of his speech in the media because he, he went against the wave. He went against what uh, the society is. Uh, uh, Pope Francis last week said our society is more interested in football than 
in suffering people in Syria and Iraq. And this was like a shock for me. This was the, the good phrase I needed to hear. Yes, of course, why football is more important than the suffering. I think the real enemy of our societies, we don't know who is. I think the devil uh, uh, Jesus spoke about is inside us, is in our sin, is in our blindness. Uh, if everybody can say, I am sorry, maybe the world can be better. Your Grace, thank you so much for, for uh, being with us uh, this time. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us in another episode of our program Where God Weeps. If you want to learn more about the situation of the Catholic Church in Iraq, we encourage you to contact the information at the end of this program. Thank you, and God bless. Bye.